424 once again with NASCAR 08. And in this episode of our season with David Rudiman's Double Zero Domino's Toyota Camry, we are going to be completing race 22 of 36, which is going to take place at Watkins Glen International for the NASCAR Nextel Cup at the Glen. Yes, it's called Watkins Glen International, not Raceway or anything like that. I don't know why Watkins Glen has to have such a stupid name in actual NASCAR and such. But in the last episode, we raced at Pocono Raceway and got our fifth win in a row, which is probably starting to annoy a lot of people watching this Let's Play. But we're about to go to Watkins Glen. If you remember the Watkins Glen race in NASCAR 09, I finished in 13th and had a Green Day filled rage fit on that last lap of that race. We finished 13th in that one. So my goal in this video is to finish 13th or better. Problem with that is, this car sucks. And Greg Biffle's car was actually pretty good. The fact that I couldn't get a top 10 in Greg Biffle's car in that game was very disappointing. So maybe our tires won't be as worn at the end of this race. Only problem is that you don't have pit stops at this Watkins Glen race for some reason. And that's probably just because AI don't pit. If you pit, you get sent back to the last plate to lap down unless there's a caution. And even if there's a caution, the AI don't pit. And they're not really affected by the tire wear after the restart or something. And it's... Uh, it's just hectic. Jimmy Johnson has the track record here with a minute and 10.78 seconds of a lap time. And that was actually set by me because it had that blue text. So that means at some point during a live stream, someone requested me to race as Jimmy Johnson and we immediately got that track record. John Wood is going to be starting on the pole. <sighs> why is this becoming a thing, EA Sports? Why, why, why? Jeff Green's going to be starting in second, so that's kind of nice. Sterling Marlin's going to start in third. Kyle Busch will start in fourth. Matt Kins at fifth. Elliot Sadler will start in sixth. Ryan Newman in seventh. Our teammate Michael Waltrip is going to start in eighth, which is on the outside, so that kind of sucks, but it's kind of often for him to be starting in the top ten. David Gillen's going to start in ninth, and Tony Raines will start in tenth. Tony Raines, that's a weird driver to have there. And uh, let's go ahead and find Dale Jarrett. There's Tony Stewart in fifteenth. Jimmy Johnson, seventeenth. Junior, eighteenth. Dale Jarrett, uh, oh come on man, Dale Jarrett's going to start in 33rd, it's on the inside, but I can only hope that he doesn't lose positions, we already know that he's not going to make the chase, I'm starting to wonder if Michael Waltrip's going to make the chase, starting from the tail of the field, this is actually going to be a race with the uh, car tomorrow, we were at that white screen for a really long time, green flag is out, we're underway for 7 laps here at Watkins Glen. Uh, let's try to make a bunch of passes in turn one, but not too many passes, because then we're just going to actually run over some cars on the brakes. Now, and Dale Jarrett just drove right down into me as we went to the corner. Of all the cars I could have possibly hit in that situation, it just had to be him, didn't it? Let's get in behind Dave Blaney. Dave Blaney um, finished like dead last in the last race, didn't he? I think he did. Either him or David Reagan. My driver just took forever to ship him to fourth gear. Yeah, I don't use um, the manual transmission in any of these games these days. I think I used to in Gran Turismo whenever I played that game. And at some point during like NASCAR Thunder 2004, whenever I first started playing that game a lot. Okay, I'm trying not to hit these guys. I'm trying to take the track just like they do, because it's not a good idea trying to pass them there unless you're on the other side. And even then, you could possibly hit that wall in the chicane, which is not actually there. Um, they... It was never there. It was always just something that they put in the games to keep from taking shortcuts because they couldn't figure out the penalized drivers were doing that or the, the players were doing it. So we're going to get right here and we're going to practically dive bomb this corner. One thing I know about this one, it doesn't matter how slow you're going, it's really hard to keep the bottom. But we did really, really well that time. But now I'm on the outside of the next one. So this sucks. Okay, we're going to get a runoff. I'm going to push Mike Wallace a bit. Yeah, is this Mike Wallace? Yeah, Mike Wallace drives the 09 car. I'm trying to get... Okay, we're going to have to get past Mark Martin right here. Then we'll hit the brakes. Okay, I'm trying to clear uh, Mike... Mike Martin? Mark Martin, so that we can be at the bottom of the corner and make some passes. And we did. We're in 21st place after the first lap. Or no, also a little bit of the second lap, too, but that doesn't matter. So this is pretty cool. Get underneath Bobby Labonte right here. Get it really tight. Little sparks right there. That's 20th. Got JJ Yelly's draft, so that's going to pull us past Bobby Labonte. I'm going to try to be on the inside of that chicane in a little bit. Oh, dear. Whoa! Okay, turn the car. And JJ Yelly made contact with us because my car did not want to turn. 
Could have been worse. He could have actually spun, but that didn't happen. We're at the bottom of the U-turn because of that situation, me getting so tight. Pretty good run off. We're at 19th. We're at 19th. We are six spots away from finishing where we did in the uh, NASCAR 9 race here. Okay, hard on the brakes. Hard on the brakes. Oh, my God. I'm driving so slow not to hit these guys that I'm actually getting that corner better than I ever did in Astro 9. Oh wait, can we get a run underneath Jimmy Johnson? Yes, we can. Wow, that was a great move. That was probably the best move I'm going to make all race. Just wait, I'm going to do something else that looks makes me look like a jackass at some point in the next freaking four laps. Actually, five laps. We're on lap three now. We're not on lap two anymore. Okay, let's just get a run off right here. Oh, we're going to slide underneath Dale and our junior. Now we're three wide. This is not something you want to be in the uphill S's. Oh, dear. I hit the wall. And now we're all vacuuming the ground. That was what I was trying to keep from happening. Because whenever you make contact, specifically at that part of the track, in a lot of these EA NASCAR games, your car sucks itself into the ground. I don't know why, but that also happens in the first turn at um, Infineon, the EA NASCAR games a lot. Uh, it doesn't happen in the NASCAR Thunder 2004, which is why that game is so great. I almost hit that wall. My car was so freaking tight. We're not going to be on the inside of U-turn right here. Oh, we got a caution. And that caused me to rear in Clint Boyer. Uh, I was trying to make it three wide into that U-turn, even though that's not a good idea. I was going to slip past that six car and then get underneath Clint Boyer. But we had a caution. And I didn't cause the first caution of the race in this game. In Astro 9, I just freaking raped three drivers all at once claiming myself to be an actual boss, but in this game, it was my teammate Dale Jarrett, and he, he raped himself. He, he used Paul Menard to rape himself. These, um, these rape culture NASCAR games, man. EA Sports. It's a game. So let's get another good look at this. That was not a very good look at that. Well, we got a good look at the second half of it. Maybe that should be the thumbnail. My teammate just upside down. Let's just go ahead and confirm the fact that AI do not pit in this game, even under caution. I want you guys to see this. Yeah, we probably should pit, but we're not going to. Just so we could all have fresh tires. I mean, it'd be good for me if we went to take a pit stop for sure, because whenever I get worn tires, my car is so freaking loose that I die. And, well, that's what I'm going to deal with. Why are we at first gear at the restart? Or even second gear? We should be in third gear like we are now. Maybe we should have been in second gear, I don't know. So we're in 15th now. Let's just make up a couple more spots, and we'll be doing better. Oh my god, Dale Jr. came in so freaking hot. We're gonna get a... Uh, what? I didn't ever turn to the right, you stupid game. What the fuck was that? That was bullshit. I had a runoff, and I was so happy to see it, and then my car just turned dead right. I didn't ever tell the damn thing to do that. I'm trying to stay off of Clint Boyer's bumper so I can not vacuum the ground again. Domino's and the ground, they're not very much into the vacuuming thing, if you ask me. 14th. One more pass, and I will be in 13. Okay, we're going to slingshot past Ken Schrader right here. This is probably not the best of ideas. Get on the brakes. Don't force me into that wall. God damn it. It's so hard to make a pass right there all of a sudden. My car is just too tight. I swear I did it at the very beginning of the race, maybe, but now I just can't pass there, period. And I like having many places to pass, and that's just not one of them, so I guess I have to give up on that. Maybe I can use Tony Raines' draft to pull ahead of Casey Kane and have the inside going to this next corner. Yeah, we will. Let's just try not to overdrive it and slide the track. Okay. And I hit Tony Raines. Gonna make a gap right here so I can get to the inside of the next corner. Uh, that's underneath Almondinger, and I'm stuck to Almondinger. I'm stuck to Almondinger! Uh, I slowed down enough for the corner, but once we made contact, we started having a massage. I don't know. We were massaging each other's quarter panels and front bumpers and everything all at once. It was just nuts. I'm in the top 10 now. I want to make a few more passes just so that I can confirm that I'll get a top 10 because once Tyler comes in, we're probably going to lose position with how loose the car is going to be. Well, there's Michael Waltrip in ninth place. Once I pass, we'll be in 10th, so he'll still be in the top 10. I hope that he at least gets a top 10 in this race. That would honestly disappoint me if he didn't. There's a huge gap between me and Almendinger, and he kind of caught me in the, the first corner at the beginning of this lap, but I don't know. I wasn't trying to pass right there. I was trying not to hit him going to the corner, and thus Casey Kane has caught up to us. 
there's just nowhere to go if you're next to someone going to that turn. And I don't really want to be next to him going to the corner, but I mean, if I don't want to drive into him and I want to take the corner at my own speed, then I have to just be on the outside of him or the inside of him. Ah, I feel like there's nowhere to pass anymore. The U-turn is a good place to pass, but we lost our distance on Michael Walker for that part of the track. Okay, I don't have any more grip in this corner. Come on, get some grip right here. That was decent, but we're not really making up any time. Maybe we can make a pass in turn one, depending on how much they hit the brakes this time. We got two laps to go this time by. The tires are in the yellow, but it feels like they're already in the orange, if you ask me. No, I'm not turning to the left, I'm not turning to the right. I'm just driving in a straight line. I tried making a pass right there, but my car did not want to get a run. It just wanted to slide around. And now we're sliding. You shifted the fourth gear. You did this at the beginning of the race. Now you're doing it now. This is kind of ridiculous. Uh, I figured that they were in the fourth gear as well at that part of the track. I'm trying to clear Michael Waltrip going to this next chicane. Okay, I think we'll be fine here. Sit the brakes, hit the brakes. Ah, uh, I'm really loose right now. I'm sliding all over the damn place. This is a weird place to be loose, but I am. Uh, I remember being loose at this part of the track on Warren Tires and Nascar 09. It's freaking deja vu. We've got one more lap to go after that last corner. Uh, the tires aren't in the orange yet, but will they be once we come to the start-finish line? I don't know. Okay, I don't exactly want to make a pass here, but I feel like my car is trying to. Uh, he shifted down to second for a little bit. That was weird. Okay, there's the white flag. Jeff Green is in the lead. Jeff Green get a second win in this season. That's going to be ridiculous. David Gillen's going to try to block me. Not going to happen. Oh, dear. And we ended the race under caution by dumping David Gillen because he tried to hold me inside whenever I was clearly already there. Ugh. Same thing. Oh, my God. Look at that wreck in the background. The same thing happened whenever, um, what was it, um, Jeff Green did the same thing to me whenever we were at, uh, New Hampshire a few races ago. I was hoping that the race would go on, you know, we could get to run one more lap, maybe make a couple more passes, even though Tyler is probably going to hinder us from doing that, but Michael Walsh, got a top 10, we got a top 10, we finished ninth. we did better in this race than we did whenever we did this race in NASCAR 09, like I was mentioning many times in this race. Ugh. I don't have anything against David Gillen. My, my skill of driving this freaking race car does. I was trying to turn all the way to the freaking right and get underneath Dave Gillen. And I already was, but apparently he wanted to stay on the outside. I mean, once I got there, I felt like he should have given up that position so that he wouldn't get dumped. But Tyler was going to keep me from making that pass, so I probably shouldn't have tried making it anyways. But let's go ahead and look at the race results. Uh, Jeff Green started second, and he came away with the win, getting his second win of the season. He led four laps in this race, which is going to give him the most laps led, and the other three were led by John Wood. That's disgusting. I don't think Jeff Green got the lead until like the last corner or something. I don't remember what it was, but I remember looking at the map and it like changed right as I looked at it. Sterling Marlin started in third, finished in third. Um, is this Kurt Busch or Kyle Busch? Started in fourth and finished in fourth. I don't even remember. Ryan Newman started in seventh, finished in fifth. Elliot Sadler started in sixth and finished in sixth. We had hardly anybody exchanging positions in this freaking race. And probably didn't happen until I came along because otherwise they just drive around in circles. Matt Kinseth started in 5th and finished in 7th. David Gillen started in ninth and finished in 8th. So he, he still kept his position. He still finished right in front of me. So the whole me dumping David Gillen, not intentionally, is not that big of a deal because he still kept his position and his car didn't really get that damage at all in the first place. And, well, here's us. Started last place, finished in ninth, And there's Michael Walter who started in 8th and finished in 10th. So he lost two positions in this race. At least he still got a top 10, like I said a while ago. There's Dale and our junior start 18th, finished in 16th. Tony Stewart, 18th. Jimmy Johnson, 20th. You know, a lot of these drivers do not be long finishing in these positions. But there's Robbie Gordon. He finished in 24th, and he's supposed to be good at road courses. Dale Jarrett started in 33rd and finished in 29th. And you can go ahead and look at the rest of this stuff. Blah -bitty, blah -bitty blur. JJ Yill, he started 19th and finished in 43rd. And he only ran two laps in this race. He got a DNF. Uh, did I make some contact with JJ Lee at some point to cause this to happen? I can't remember. After ending our win streak with a top 10 finish, we are 859 points in front of Kyle Busch, who just passed Tony Stewart in the points, which disappoints me, honestly. 
And Tony Stewart is in third, 897 points back. John Wood is in fourth, 947 points back, disgustingly. Ryan Newman is in fifth, 1,050 back. Matt Kenseth is in sixth, 1,084 back. Jeff Green, who just won at Watkins Glen, is in seventh, 1,091 points back. Ken Schrader is in eighth, 1,104 points back. Our teammate Michael Waltrip is still in ninth, 1,154 back. And Robbie Gordon is in tenth, 1,221 back. And then you've still got Clint Boy right here in eleventh, 1,229 back. Jimmy Johnson is right above the cut line in twelfth, 1,313 back. We've got Mark Martin, Kevin Harvick, Elliot Tyler, these guys still right below the cut line. David Gilland was one of the drivers right below the cut line, and we just dumped him going into turn one on accident. So that's something you get offended about, but I didn't lose many positions, so whatever. Caution came out stopped him from losing any positions in the first place. Ah, trying to find a way to defend myself and my stupidity and my lack of actual skill. Dale Earnhardt Jr. lost a couple positions, or not a couple positions, but one position after that race. Uh, there's Dale Jarrett, 27th, always losing positions in the point standings now. For a while, he was just moving forward, and I was loving it, but nope, not anymore. And that is the point standings. On Monday, we are going to Michigan International Speedway for the Performance 400. Apparently, it's not going to be titled the 3M Performance 400. I don't know why. Maybe they just couldn't get 3M in this game. That's going to be race 23 of 36. See you next time. That's that and episode over.